Hey guys, it's me, MenVakeJack24 here, and today I am going to be reacting to Oversimplifying, nine, nine, Oversimplifying, what the emo war is. If I sound a little off, which I probably will or will not sound, so that's probably because I'm filming, I'm recording this in a different room, like a much more rar larger room, so that's why it's more like an echo back and forth. Also, remember, I'll... All the copyright does want oversimplified, and before I start this reaction, I want to tell you guys that the emo war was a real thing. It's a real thing in Australia. And also, and also, one one more thing is that this video is only made for the possible of possible reasons just to only react and to be educational. Educational in any ways. Let's begin. Let's begin. Hopefully that's bright enough for you guys. Anyways, let's begin. This is Australia. For the man who imagines being strangled by a tarantula while a kangaroo breaks his kneecaps and thinks, Mmm, yes please. Yep, that is pretty much Australia. Australia, but I'm pretty sure more of the spiders would likely bite you or sting you to death. For the man who pictures himself being eaten by a snake in the burning outback while eating a Vegemite sandwich and thinks, Mmm, yes please. I'm not sure what that has to do with anything, but maybe. That man was Governor Arthur Phillip, who landed in Eastern Australia in 1788, presumably saw a dingo being eaten by a crocodile, being eaten by a death adder, being eaten by a koala, being eaten by Mel Gibson, and... Alright, so how old is Mel Gibson if he's eating a koala at the time, time of English explorers? To himself. Yes. Good. Now I know what you're thinking. But oversimplified, the British didn't just- Sorry, this is just their advertising part, which I am going to just quickly review, but this is actually untrue. For Australia, the Vikings did, and you'd be wrong. I'm not sure why you'd think that, but hey, it- That is true. I love Vikings so much, then why don't you check out today's sponsor. Vikings War of Clans was inspired by the PC yeah. strategy and RPG games all of right. the 90s we all loved. There. Alright, so if you guys missed it, it was pretty much just how I'm doing his advertising. But since I'm not part of his advertising and I have a very limited time schedule for this, for this, for this video, because of working, working hard and work, and I still have to do tons of work, but I gotta do, skip that part. Anyways, if you guys wanna watch it, it's just him just explaining. Explaining on what you can get. Shield. Oh, New York. This is, I believe, in the early 1920s. Bye, bye. Man, this is great. The market will continue to grow forever. But what if it doesn't? Alright, so the only one time when you actually need to criticize something was this guy. Crap, I never thought of that. Sell, sell. And the stock market cr Yep, that's how it crashed. Which led to economic downturn, which meant banks wouldn't lend anyone any money, which led to more economic downturn, which meant everyone stopped buying stuff, which led to more economic downturn, and hey, what if all the crops in the Great Plains were destroyed in a drought, and then a big dust storm engulfed the area? That's right, more economic downturn. Yep, that is actually what happened. In an effort to combat the crisis, America began imposing tariffs on foreign imports, which made the economic downturn go global, and the earth got really depressed. But one day- Yeah, that was it. The Great Depression. It was actually more of a great finance depression than an actual, than an actual depression. That was hit harder than most by the whole affair. Australia, the pro Yep, Australia was done. The problem for Australia was that it relied heavily on its export industries, and in the current economic climate, no one was buying. To make things worse, Australia had introduced its own currency and pegged it onto the gold standard via the British pound. But then the UK started messing with its own peg on the gold standard, and if this is starting to sound confusing, then let me oversimplify it for you. Alright, yeah, that is pretty confusing because I don't know how, how, how current outcomes work. I do know that America's system is pretty much dollars, coin, coin is pretty much dollars, which is sort of like a pound, pound, but it goes in and out, in and out of what you want to do, but once someone else starts attaching their own thing to it, to it, then it's going to be a little bit confusing, but then once you start messing with your own thing, then that's just going to lead into more economic downturn. Hey UK, looks like my car is broken down. Want to give me a tow? 
No problem, friend. I got you. And that is how it would be oversimplified. He wasn't wrong. More economic downturn. The point I'm trying to make is things weren't good, and in particular, it was Australia's farmers that were suffering most. After the First World War, Australia had given returning veterans land for farming, but with the current economic crisis, the farmers just weren't making enough money, and many left to go find work in the cities. Well, that's probably a smart idea for the farmers, but yet again, Australia does need its own food supplies. Since it's an island, con continent, country, country, yeah, that's right, Australia, its own continent, Continent, yeah. Yeah, so pretty much it goes in and out, in and out of growing its own food, and sometimes I believe by getting imports. You can always correct me down in the comments if I'm wrong about that, but pretty sure that's it. I know that's how most of island nations get their food. For those who remained, things were about to get even worse. Oh no, it's a derpy emu. He should kill it with fire. Before we get into that, it's time for some cultural exchange. Alright, cultural exchange. Well, I'm from America and I can tell you, I can tell you that my flag, that our flag has 50 stars on it. My national bird is the bald eagle. It's a strong patriotic symbol of America and a deeply valued and protected species. My national bird is the peafowl. It's a beautiful creature. Pretty sure that's a peacock whose vivid colors represent India, so we list it as a protected species. My national bird is the emu, and it's a pest. <laughs> oh my goodness, this is very odd. The only bird I believe Australia has is technically the emu. Emu. I'm pretty sure that... No, kiwis... No, kiwis are... Like the bird kiwis in, in New Zealand. Also bloody delicious. Emus, 6 feet tall, 90 to 120 pounds, and able to run at speeds up to 40 miles per hour, usually return to the coast after their breeding season. But suddenly they found Western Australia full of lush, wet farmland. Oh no, this can't end well. Oh my, look at all this delicious wheat that just so happens to be growing here in large quantities. Hey guys, get a load of this, mm. you know my, oh, look wow. at all this oh, yeah. just He just replayed on his same sound, sound audio. Hey, who left this big hole in the fence? <laughs> oh no, it just goes with the emus and then straight up into their other allies for eating stuff. The rabbits. Get a load of this. Oh wow. Oh, oh, yeah. 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 Oh yeah. That's what I am. Great. This has got to be the worst day for him. Lovely morning for some farming. What? Those damned emus. They have it in for me. They're bullies. They're nothing but bullies. Calm down, Bruce. They're just animals. It's not personal. Hey, Farmer Bruce. Where did you find that hat? The toilet? Alright, now we just made it personal. Yes. <laughs> 20,000 emus cost the already struggling farmers millions more pounds in lost crops and damages. The situation couldn't continue like this. Something had to be done. So in 1932, the farmers turned to the government for help. You'd think they'd go to the Minister of Agriculture, but these Yeah, I'm pretty sure that they should have, but since they are technically... Since they are veterans... Veterans... They said no. This is a job for the military, so they went to George Pierce, the Minister of Defense. That's right, Australia was to go to war with the emus. But not if This doesn't make sense. ...was happy with the idea. This is barbaric. We can't go slaughtering thousands of our own national bird. Oh, come on, guys. The machine guns will make it quick and painless. Machine... ...guns? This is pretty much... Pe ...pena? Pena, I believe? It's one of the national, it's one of the, no, it's the PETA, PETA, my, my bad. This is like PETA, it's just saying that, then like, you shouldn't harm animals. For instance, they even mocked fun of Steve Rowan after he died. Which, honestly, which was pretty personal to Australia. But I mean, I do understand where you're saying against your own national bird, but if you don't have it up as a protected species, I guess you can say it. 
it in the works like that, but who really knows for that? It's it's confusing. Using machine guns? This is animal cruelty. Look, I know it's unusual, but it's not like we're poachers turning the birds into feather hats. He's, he's got a point there, but they're going to make a funny joke out of this. Think of the benefits. It'll be good target practice for our boys. That is true. The government can show it took action. Also true. Plus, I can get myself a nice new feather hat. <laughs> this is the joke, guys. Uh, did I say feather hat? I meant I want to gather chat with you about getting you all some nice new feather hats. Uh, did I? <laughs> this is too, too, too funny for me. Feather hats? I meant I want to wage terror at these emus and turn them all into feather hats. Damn it. Of course. Uh, this is Jaworis. Pierce first made the farmers sign an agreement saying that they would pay for the whole thing and that Pierce wouldn't take any of the blame if the operation that was clearly very stupid turned out to indeed be stupid. And the smart man. Not gonna lie, that is one smart man to do that. Operation went ahead. Major G P W Meredith and his men were sent with two Lewis machine guns to hunt down and take out the evil emu population. In Look, it's an email. In Australia. Target spotted. Well, was it an emu? No, sir. It's an emo. Damn it, Joan. <laughs> Learn your vowels. I'm sorry. Okay. This is too confusing because in act in I believe both in Britain and Australia. Australia and I believe in actual Canada. Correct me if I'm wrong about Canada or or the UK, but I do know that in Australia. Yeah, that they do say sorry is Surrey, which is which is kind of kind of funny, so it's so it's just funny. It looks like the humans are coming for us. But check this out. I've come up with an amazing plan. See if you can follow me here, okay? When they approach, we run away. They actually did not actually have plans. Just the emus or just random emus. Emus, but they did have that smart idea. Sir, you're a genius. Pierce sent a camera crew along with the machine gunners to capture some good old propaganda for the government. And the first battle took place in November at Campion. The men spotted a mob of emus from a distance, so they set up the guns and opened fire. The emus split up into smaller groups and ran in every direction. The men were only able to kill what they called a number of birds. But... By a number, we mean less than a handful. Handful, that's, that's further of an explanation. Vast majority got away. Cut! When you have to be the director of your own film, how do you do that? I guess we should ask Weird Al. He, he knows how to do that perfectly. Surprisingly, many of the emus were able to take multiple bullets, but still run at full speed to safety. Causing Meredith to compare them to tanks, saying, I mean, if Australia would have just sent a couple of emus, I don't know, in some carrier planes, planes, they could have just dropped them off, dropped them off to help Britain take out, take out, take out some of the Japanese, Japanese in the, in the sea, in the, no, in the Imperial, no, no, what's it called, in the Japanese, Japanese spear of influence, influence. They could have done that to save, save Australia. I mean, if they can drive bullets, bullets, bullets with that, and they can run up to forty miles per hour and still have that much damage. I see where this guy believes that there are living tanks. If we had a military division with the bullet carrying capacity of these birds, it would face any army in the world. This actually proves my point. Okay, we need to get closer. This is always a joke with oversimplified. Everyone gets closer to to the person who says, Will you need to be closer or come to me? No, you idiots, not to me, to the emus. Oh, sorry. No, no. Oh, I guess it's just sorry. I like it. So next, they tried sneaking up on a large number of emus near a local dam and firing at short range. Maybe the men were just unlucky, but my professional opinion... This is not a good professional opinion here, but remember, a professional opinion is that is that this is not a that this is an opinion, opinion, not a fact, an opinion. As the emus were magic, because both guns jammed after just twelve emus were killed, and once again the rest got away. Cut. 
Still, that's why you have the dark sun. But you're not the one with the camera. The men were feeling a little humiliated after losing to a pack of discount ostriches, so they- Oh my goodness, that's exactly what I was actually thinking of, what they, what they should have been feeling. Decided to move further south, where the emus were said to be tamer. And this time, they had a new strategy. Okay, Jones, here's the plan. You mount the machine gun in the back, I'll chase the emus, you shoot. Got it? Got it. It sort of went like that, but an emu actually did crash in into the windshield and actually got its head stuck into the into the the steering wheel and it killed itself. I'm gonna shove that camera up your view. Yeah, that is how it would actually be. Yeah, yeah. When you're really angry at someone, yeah, that's how it's gonna be. Operation was a fiasco, and the press. Oh, it's a humiliating joke. Save the emus. My chemical bromance and they just flipped the image. Field day. In Parliament, Pierce was lambasted, and an opposition Wait, party member suggested that ma Soldier tax. This is... Soldier tax. Don't read this. I'm gonna copy and paste it. It's okay. <laughs> oh, he just... He just repeats it. I guess that's a smart way on how to repeat it. Ooh, ten, 20 pence. Not bad. Field day. In Parliament, Pierce was lambasted, and an opposition party member... Oh, look, he's got a feather hat. ...tested that medal should be handed out to the emus, who... That is clearly a defeat. Defeat to Australia. Getting de defeated by its own national bird. In every round so far, Pierce, feeling quite humiliated, called the operation off. But four days later, the farmers... Smart idea to call it off. ...again and said, Hey man, the emus are still eating all our crops. Can you send the army back out here? And Pierce was like, Yeah, okay. So the operation... Oh yeah, it's round two. ...back on for round two. And this time, Meredith and his men had learned the emus' guerrilla tactics and were much more successful, with reports suggesting the men were cutting down 300 emus every week. I hope you boys are getting great footage of this. What on earth filming? I wouldn't have to agree. What are, what are you guys filming? Filming? I would actually like to know. Despite... Oh, oh, it's Mel Gibson eating a claw. Success. The media had lost in... <laughs> he uses the same thing again. Oh, Gibson uh, again. Can he be? Can he be considered Australian? I guess we'll never know. It's in the whole thing. But with a thousand emus killed, Pierce finally ended the operation and returned to Parliament to <laughs> victory for the humans. All right. So I'm going to say a couple things wrong with this, in which I did see this video earlier, and I do know that this guy here is actually going to explain everything that I'm going to explain. So I'm just gonna let him do the talking. Not me, him. For once, it's actually the video that does the talking. And I actually get a break on my job. There are 20,000 emus out there. I meant hobby. And crops, and you've killed a thousand. Mm-hmm. Meaning there's still 19,000 emus out there. Yep. And in addition, you've burned through 10,000 rounds of ammunition. Uh-huh. Meaning you wasted 10 rounds per confirmed kill. That's right. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and call this one for the emus. At least I got a feather hat. What? What? So in the end... That is how you would pull that off. The emus won the Great Emu War of 1932, and the emus continued to wreak havoc on the farmers for years to come. The gov... It's funny picture of things. ...introduced a bounty system, which saw some success. But for a moment, let's take some time to remember the brave men who said goodbye to their I'm families just and risked their part. lives to take on the great, evil, emu population in Western Australia. Part. But even more importantly, let's think of the friends they made, the bond they created, and the memories they shared. Take me home. Yeah, I'm gonna have to skip this part, guys. Just don't feel bad, it's just a re-clip of what they do. It's just that this part is actually on how it actually got solved at the end. Uh, guys? I solved the emu crisis. Really? How? I just made some better fences. That is how you, that's actually how they solved it. Solved it. I mean, the Australians went out of default, and they played a key major role into World War II, which we would get to pretty soon, 
but that's not going to be until later, later in April, in April, so I have quite some time to prepare videos for it. Oh my goodness, look at this. This is, this is really funny. It's all, it's all created. Oh wow, it's barely conscious while writing this. <laughs> oh my goodness, that, that is true. Anyways, if you guys are new, make sure to sub make sure to like the video and also comment down below. And also, I do have to tell you this: that the Emu War reaction was actually for educational purposes, for about Australia fighting its national bird, which I've actually never heard of. Heard of, and also this video was meant to be a reaction only to oversimplified video. I don't mean to intrude on this, but but all the copyright does belong to oversimplified, and I'm just reacting to this for educational purposes. And I don't mean to sound like a bum here, but please enjoy this video and join the Cake and Nation. Anyways, goodbye.